In today's video, we are going to be doing a very special rehousing for two very special pets I own. This is a long overdue one, so stay tuned, it's gonna be awesome. So these are my rhinoceros rat snakes. We have my female Nib and my male Pinocchio. I've owned them since they were tiny little neonates. I picked them up at the November 2022 Reptile and Plant Expo from Ashley Dazan of Northern Lights Reptile Imports. They were European bred and they're really a slower growing species of colubrid. They come from cooler parts of Northern Vietnam. And so keeping them on the cooler side and trying to feed them infrequently because they're prone to obesity has resulted in animals that, well, don't grow super fast. However, they are long overdue for their next upgrade. And so in today's video, we're going to be setting up two 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra terrariums, fully planted, naturalistic for these two lovely animals and moving them in to see how they like their new homes. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely stick around. It's gonna be super fun. We love to do the terrarium builds here. Now, a quick trip to the nursery to find some suitable plants. All right, all right, all right, everybody. We are back from the nursery now, and I got a bunch of awesome tropical plants, some of which are going to be for our builds today, and some of which are gonna be for another special project I'm not gonna tell you about just yet. So let's get started, because these animals are gonna love their future homes. All right, friends, let's get started. So, as I said before, these are two 12 by 12 by 18 Exoterra terrariums. I love the quality of these terrariums, plus I like that they're front opening. Here in this one, I installed a cork wall as the background, and in the second one, it's an enclosure I used to keep my Fantasticus in. It's a custom cork spray foam cocoa silicone background that looks naturalistic and will work just perfectly fine. So some of the things we'll be using for this build are sticky tack. Trust me, I know you're like, what? What do you need that for? I'll explain. We have some cork tubes here stuffed with sphagnum moss that are gonna provide our animals with wonderful naturalistic hides. For substrate, I'm gonna be using the Zilla Jungle Mix. I like this product. It's very soft, it holds moisture well, the animals can dig in it, plants go really well in it, it's good. I've got some dried leaf litter, which can help provide cover and food for the cleanup crew, and just again, help with the naturalistic aesthetic we're going for. And I have a whole bunch of vines that are gonna be used for the animals to climb on and maximize the usage of their tanks. And finally, a whole bunch of live plants. I have the Arca Palm, which will for sure outgrow this tank but it looks nice for now as well as the china doll which is in the background there now these terrariums are going to be getting manually misted and i can easily control how much water is going in which means that i don't feel i need to add a drainage layer i'm not worried about oversaturating my substrate these terrariums aren't being watered enough that we need to have a separate location to hold excess water just a simple three to four inch deep layer of substrate Spread out evenly, that's all it takes. Now, before we start scaping or adding our terrarium live plants, we're gonna figure out why it was that I showed you we need sticky tack for this project. So let's turn these terrariums around and apply it where necessary. As far as reptiles go, snakes can be quite the escape artists. A lot of terrariums have these back latches or openings to allow for electronics to run through the lid. Although the Exoterra model here has a nice locking switch to close that gap, it is possible that the snake could wedge itself in there and push its nose against the slider and we don't want to risk that. So we're going to take some of this sticky tack, mash it up so it's more moldable and stuff it into those gaps to ensure that there's no way those snakes are getting out of there. Sure, this might seem like major overkill, but do you really wanna have to tear your whole reptile room apart? Or even worse, go further into your house looking for your pet snake that escaped? I didn't think so. With our two terrariums secured, it's time to wash off our plants. Most pesticides will break down within a month or so regardless, but if you purchase plants you're going to use in a build ahead of time, keep them around for a few weeks and rinse them off every few days, there's really nothing to worry about. Just try and remove as much of the potting mix from the roots as possible before moving them into your terrarium. 
Now this is my favorite part. The first elements of life are going into our build. I'm trying to find a suitable location for this. I'm kind of putting aesthetic aside for this build. I just want there to be a dense amount of live foliage for these arboreal snakes to move through and find a sense of security in. With one of the china doll trees planted, I'm also beginning to find proper spots to insert the vines, because they can't all go in when there's too much foliage. We're gonna do it bit by bit. Add a plant here, add a vine there. I'm already so happy with how this is shaping up to look. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what is your favorite part about building a naturalistic terrarium or vivarium for your specialty pets? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give you a comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. For me, I love seeing those plants flourish, creating microclimates for my pets, and just seeing this chunk or piece of the natural environment that your animal thrives in be in your home for you to just have as, as viewing pleasure, but knowing that it benefits the pet too if done properly. That is cool. I'm not gonna say more again, leave you to it. Get those answers in in the comment section. Now, although my rhino rat snakes don't need basking lights per se, because that's actually too hot for them, they do like to get up close to the lamp where it's a little bit warmer. So taking advantage of the full height of the enclosure is important, so I'm keeping it in mind when I choose my plant and hardscape placement. Now I'm gonna take one of those large cork hollows and place it far into the back corner of the terrarium where the snake can have a sense of security. Let's go ahead now and take a bit of that loose dried sphagnum and feed it into the cork hollow. Looks good. Gonna spray it down to moisten it up and place it far into the back of the terrarium build. A few more vines for climbing and perching, and this terrarium's all ready for a snake. With our first build as inspiration, it's easy to set up the second one in a similar way. Sometimes I actually utilize pressure by pressing a long branch against the back of the tank and folding it into place against the front. We have a secure mounting. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this looks pretty awesome and I'm sure the snakes are gonna be ecstatic. The last scaping element I wanted to put in here is some of that leaf litter. We're gonna generously apply it all over the substrate as much as possible to really get that forest aesthetic we're going for. Remember that these leaves will also break down over time, also with the help of our cleanup crew that's going in after this, and it'll all help with the cycling of nutrition into the soil. Now we're going to add some water to the soil and also spray down all the plants to give them a bit of an extra humidity boost as they acclimate to these new terrariums. Okay everybody, now is the fun part, the moment of truth. We're gonna move the snakes into their new homes. I'm gonna first start by removing water dishes and transferring them to the new terrariums. Now we're going to add some tropical white springtails. These will quickly move into the soil and under the leaf litter and help regulate and consume mold and fungi that develop in our tank. Lastly, we're adding some Porcelianoides prunosus, which are the powder blue or powder orange isopods. Isopods are great custodians for helping break down organic matter. So we're actually going to use this culture to seed our two rhinoceros rat snake tanks. This is going to be the fun part. Honestly, they're so small, being bit, like minimal blood drawn, but I think using the snake hook is also just going to help minimize stress. So we're going to do a combination of handling and snake hook. Help not to get bit too many times because it still sucks, even though they're tiny. My lady. Come on now. Oh, she is watching me. You okay? Please. Ah, uh, we're probably gonna get tagged. Gah! It's fine. Duh. <laughs> Don't do it, please. I'm so nice to you. I promise I won't hurt you. 
Ah! She's not happy with me. That's okay. She's gonna run away. I mean, slither away. You're okay. I promise I'm not gonna hurt you. Now, I don't handle these. I mean, to be honest, I don't handle most of my animals that much or everything's really on their terms. But with these guys, considering how big they're gonna get, I mean, they're just, they're not particularly large, but they still get to be four or five feet long, especially the females. I think I might start putting more effort into handling them because I don't want a rat snake that big being defensive and not being okay with some handling, even if it's just when rehousing or whatever. So, you know, it's not forcibly, but just a little bit of hand treadmills and whatnot. But I just do some of that and just try and get him a bit more used to it. We're just slowly going like this. And so far so good, nice and easy, nothing too crazy. All right. Well, look at that. Nib is being so calm uh, for now. She is kind of looking at my ring finger there. But uh, all jokes aside, it's just never fun to s stress your own animal out. And yeah, getting tagged by them doesn't hurt at all. But you know, it's not fun either. It sometimes does draw a little bit of blood because their teeth are just so tiny and sharp. Ultimately, a little bit of this, like I said, I think is going to be a good thing in just preventing stress for the animal and I guess a little stress for me. Okay, Nib. Here we go. Ooh, beautiful. Here you go, girl. Up you go. Awesome. Look at her. So right off the bat, looks like Nibs already going to retreat into the hide we created for her with the cork bark. Okay, next up is Pinocchio, my male. Come on, buddy boy. You're going to a nice new home. Just, he is not happy with me. Let's go. It's okay. You're okay. Ah! Ah! I'm not gonna hurt you. You gotta let go. Trust me, you don't wanna live in there anymore. Ah! This guy's scary though, because you go to hold him and then he'll just flip around and bite you. I don't blame him. Mean big giant to him. He doesn't know me. He's just defending himself. I mean, you can even think about it this way. If you didn't have hands or legs to, to run away, to push away, to scratch, anything like that, you just use the next best thing. Whoa, 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 which is your mouth. All right, let's get him in his home. Nope, you're not biting my face. No, thank you. He is not happy with me. Okay, here we go, buddy yo. Look at you. Can't believe how much you've all grown. Alright, in you go. Okay, everybody, there we go. Rehouse both of them. I'd say that looks really great. They're gonna be so happy. Well, everybody, there you have it. I wanna take a moment to sincerely thank you for watching today's video. Let me know what you thought about the two builds. You think the animals are gonna like these? Nib, Pinocchio are such cool animals and I really want them to thrive and enjoy the new space. I hope you enjoyed. Can't wait to see you all for an upcoming video on Friday. It's gonna be awesome. If you wanna see more videos pertaining to keeping rhinoceros rat snakes, check out the playlist up above. Otherwise, I'll see you then for that next video. Bye.